Have you ever wondered how a submarine can sink to the bottom of the sea and stay down, but then still come back up to the surface? My name is Niven and I'm doing the Taking the Plunge Challenge. I'm building my own submersible to retrieve an object, but to do this, I'm gonna need some help. Welcome to Questacon. Hi Niven, how are you going with your Taking the Plunge Challenge? Well, in order to retrieve this object, my submarine will have to both submerge and resurface. So what I'm wondering is what's gonna make that possible? Well, that's the great start. You're already using the first step in the engineering design process. Ask, imagine, plan, create, improve. So asking questions like that is a great first step. Let's have a look at some of the factors that influence whether an object floats or sinks. Density is about how solid an object is. So think about how an object's size compares to its mass. Buoyancy is about the upward pressure created by the water an object displaces versus the downward pressure of the object's mass. So a ship that sits on the surface has to be less dense than the water. Well, that's right. Even though ships are very heavy, they are also very large and full of air. So I need you to think about the weight of these materials as well as the size of my design. So now I know how a ship floats, but how does a submarine sink and then float again? I might know someone who can help with that. Hi Niven. Hi. I'm Siobhan and I'm a Navy engineer. Welcome to HMA Sterling Naval Base in Perth, Western Australia. Would you like to take a look inside a submarine? Yes please. Come with me. So as you know, density is really important for determining whether something sinks or floats. That's why Navy submarines have ballast tanks. What's a ballast tank? Ballast tanks are spread throughout the submarine and they help us control the weight of the submarine by moving water in and out of the tank. Let me show you a bit more of the boat. Using this control panel, a submariner can open the flood valve at the bottom of the tank and the vent valve at the top to let more water in and cause the submarine to sink. How do you get the water back out when it's time to resurface? We store compressed air on board, which is allowed into the tanks. This forces water out of the flood valve at the bottom and decreases the submarine's density. That's pretty cool. These hand wheels control the compressed air on board. Opening them up allows air into the tank and causes the submarine to resurface. When we want to stay on the surface, the ballast tanks are pumped dry and sealed so that we achieve full buoyancy. So now you've seen inside the submarine and you know how we make it submerge and resurface. Thanks Siobhan, that was awesome. No worries, Niven. Okay, so I'm back at Questagon and it's time to build and test my submarine. My submarine uses the force from my hand to dive down to the bottom of the tank and retrieve the object. And it's positive buoyancy to return to the surface. That's great, Niven. You can see how the engineering design process leads to the development of some pretty amazing technology, right? Yes, and the final step is improve. Real submarines use water and air to change their density. I wonder how I could improve my submarine so that it doesn't need my hand to push it down. How can I let water into it just like a real Navy submarine? Do you have some ideas? <laughs>